7 o'clock. We'll call this meeting to order. Jolene, can we get a roll call? Council Member Bain. Here. Council Member Husnick. Here. Council Member Eigner. Here. Council Member Freer. Here. And Mayor Winnick. Here. Ask everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll look for an approval of the agenda. So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Agenda is approved. Next, we have open forum. Pete, Pete Tester. Sorry, Pat Tester. This is where I'm supposed to go? Yep, welcome. Okay. I live on Hannah Avenue, and I would like to know whose decision it was to put our road back to dirt. We had a half-assed blacktop that everybody loved instead of the dirt road we had before. It's not Class 5. It's dirt with a few rocks in it. Now that the... Not, that now this winter will be in our ditches when they plow the snow. So do we know who's, who decided to do this? Um, Did the council have anything say in it? Do we want Ryan to address that? Or? Sure. Uh, Mayor, City Council, this is just uh, gravel maintenance under the public works budget that you know, some of the roads that have traditionally had the millions placed on them that have become so hard that public works couldn't grade those anymore. So they had a contractor uh, mill, or reclaim those roads so they could reshape them. Actually, this portion of Henna is a next year's project that would do a double chip seal over this area. So obviously, the decision to reclaim them now, I don't know. Uh, I don't see public works here, but probably came to the point that they couldn't reshape them anymore. You know, like, you know, Forest Road, you guys probably have seen a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Where you were spending thousands of dollars in Black Pit, or hot mix patching to make those smooth out. So on a rural road, they probably made the decision to reclaim it so they could shape it now. So in the event we go into winter that they get proper drainage off that roadway and it'll be easier to maintain once the road gets frozen. Uh, but there are plans, it's in the budget for next year, of doing what you see uh, on Forest Road and just on 190th east of Highway 61 next year. So, the, there was just a few holes right where the border of H Hannah and Hugo. I and they didn't have money to patch the little, few little holes? I can't speak on behalf of the condition. I just kind of know what was, what's done there. But I know well, Public Works has spent a lot of money on patching gravel roads. They, they found money to patch the road, the holes, just past Granada where they went with that stuff for Danninger. And then you went and did that whole road in front of the airport. I'd like to know if somebody on this console has a plane or if somebody's family member has a plane that you did that road that nobody's, nobody lives on it. So the double chip seal material that was placed on that road this year is cheaper than what Public Works was spending annually in patching. So why didn't you put that on our road instead we are next where year. we live? Next year. So is this a guarantee that we are going to get this next year? It's in the CIP right now for 2018. I could show you the map or have the e map emailed to you if you would desire. Yeah, I would like that. Sure. Yeah, I would like that. Then I would also like to know the $7 charged on Excel and Connexus bill, is this for the roads? Mm -hmm. This is yes. for the roads. And so you don't have enough money to maintain the township roads? I actually think the city council made a significant investment in gravel roads last year, and you will see that can be continued on what you'll have in front of your place next year. They're also in the uh, ongoing process of further discussing how they're going to deal with the uh, 30 miles approximately that the city has, and we've had a lot of conversation with those at the workshop, especially the last six months. Uh, we've suggested a number of different alternatives on how they could potentially fund a program. 
are also discussing how that would affect their assessment program and moving forward so they could get more gravel roads dealt with. So right now there's actually been a, a lot of ongoing energy and effort being put into how to address the rural roads. Uh, Can we at least get a speed limit sign on our road? It's like a freeway. State statute gravel roads in rural areas are 55 miles an hour. Can I put my own sign up there that says deaf child area, uh, blind child area, maybe people will slow down? I would uh, encourage you just to work with Public Works because I, <laughs> I don't know what ditch maintenance is done in those areas. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's the people speeding that <coughs> complained about the holes because I know nobody that lives on Hannah complained about those holes. Is it uh, a certain time We of have day? to use the road. Those people didn't. Is it a certain time of the day that speeding is a bigger problem? In the, it, well, it's kind of all day, but mostly at, in the morning and, and in coming back from work or going to school or whatever the hell they're doing, yeah. I'm sure the chief will take a note and get some extra yeah. patrols out there. Yeah, I mean, they go so fast. You know, we got uh, two people in wheelchairs that can't go out on the road now. I mean, I don't, but I mean the neighbors. And so. Okay, so who do I give my email address to? If you could just uh, submit that to uh, the city, and I'll make sure they have the map tomorrow. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, thank you for your concerns. <coughs> and uh, Mr. Ashback. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, uh, Rick Ashback. I serve on the Forest Lake Airport Commission and help out with city staff and others um, with some of the manage management of the airport. So just wanted to, I brought a little flyer up to you for each of you to look at. Um, on August 20th, we held the airport open house um, and it was a great event. Um, it was done you know, with your support at the council level, as well as with a lot of dedicated pilots and um, in the area and from, from around the area. Um, we, we served, we, as far as the programs that we have, the, the chief of police comes out with some vehicles, the fire department comes out, uh, North Memorial was there with a helicopter for people to see. Um, we had uh, Cirrus aircraft from Duluth brought an aircraft down for, for the public and the pilots to to see and, and sit in and learn about. Uh, Kodiak, um, which has a, a large, impressive airplane, came in for a couple of hours for, for display purposes. Uh, Daniela's um, sponsored uh, two warbirds, a T-28 and a T-6. That was a big hit there. Um, obviously, the Lions worked very hard um, to provide food services there. And uh, the EAA Chapter 745 from Benson Airport is the ones that helped sponsor the Young Eagles event. Young Eagles is where pilots um, with the, their own plane and their own um, gas money fly youth from ages 8 through 17 and uh, with parental approval, obviously. And uh, that day we had 10, 10 pilots and planes and we flew 170 children. Um, we quit taking uh, um, registrations at about 2.30, but we continued flying until 5 o'clock because there was a, a long lineup. So the attendance um, was down compared to the, not last year because we didn't have one, but the year before. But from a sales perspective with the Lions and, and with Daniela's, um, sales were about the same. And of course, the, the number of kids we hauled was pretty much the same. So um, it was definitely a, um, a place where, you know, we didn't get a lot of extra people there, but the ones that were there wanted their kids to fly and they wanted to enjoy the, the treats and the food and, and the activities there. So it, uh, it went off um, very, very well. And uh, um, we also had a, um, an individual arrive, uh, Mark Baker, who lives in White Bear, is the president of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. And he flew in with his J3 Cub, which is kind of an interesting story because that Cub was owned by the family that owned the property that my mom and dad bought in 1960, but it was also sold to Jerry who owned the, it was also sold um, by Shorty Dupani who built the airport in Forest Lake. So the president of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association uh, um, thought it'd be fun to fly it into the airport that it originated life at and he's completely restored it and, and he was also very pleased with the improvements that were made and, and the support that the, uh, the airport has from the community. So he had a great time there as well. So. We had uh, on the handout that uh, was produced by one of the volunteers, you'll notice that just under $2,000 in fuel cost was, was purchased by volunteer pilots for the Young Eagle rides. 
Um, uh, Tim Dahlbeck uh, um, paid for the tent rental instead of putting it onto the city. Daniela's, as we said, sponsored the Air Force planes and uh, um, talked about 10 volunteer pilots and 70 volunteer um, hours for event planning and, and, uh, and, and the, the event itself and about 60 volunteer flying hours from, from the 10 pilots. But it was a terrific day. Um, ben, I, Mayor, I believe you were there. I just didn't get a chance yep. to talk to you. I seen so. you working hard out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so. yeah I, we, I was there with uh, part of my family. We had a great time and, uh, you know, um, great interaction between the volunteers and the people in her, you know, just attending it and, you know, perfect weather. It was, yeah, it was a nice event. It was all, thank you. It all, all went very well. So I wanted to make sure that uh, all of you had a chance to, to learn about it. So thank all you very right. much. And thank we you. look forward to next year. Thank you. All right. And then finishes up open forum. So let's move on to a consent agenda. And I'll look for approval of the consent agenda or changes there too. Hmm. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right, motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, I guess we can. And then let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda. One, one abstention. Oh, one abstention. I can't approve the minutes. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. Moving on to the regular agenda. 7A, cooperative agreement for the NFL. Chief Peterson, can you take us through that one? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council members, uh, good evening. What I have for you today is a cooperative agreement that we, we received from the City of Minneapolis. Um, in cooperation with Minneapolis Police Department, St. Paul Police Department, and Bloomington Police Department, they are requesting uh, agencies, uh, police departments, um, to assist with the 2018 uh, Super Bowl that's gonna be hosted at the US Bank Stadium in February of 2018. And there are many events that are gonna take place between January 26th and February 5th that they are, uh, know they're gonna need some, um, quite a bit of assistance from uh, fellow police officers from other jurisdictions. This cooperative agreement was reviewed by the League of Minnesota Cities and our city attorney. Um, and I want to present it to you for uh, possibility of having our officers assist at some of these events. Um, definitely, I just wanna make it very clear that in no way are we going to jeopardize uh, the safety and security of the city of Forest Lake and its citizens. Um, if we have officers that are available, um, we would like to send officers down to assist with this event. Do you have any questions for me in regards to the agreement or for the city attorney? We'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, you know, I think we just need to clarify a few things for general public, but uh, we are getting reimbursed for time, um, vehicles as well, things like that. Yes, we are. I apologize for not mentioning that. Yes, yeah, so it'd be uh, wages and fringe uh, benefits will be reimbursed to the, um, to the city for any um, uh, officers that are down there, and it'd be uh, hourly wages that they'd be um, reimbursed for actually the city would be reimbursed and then we in turn would uh, would pay those officers and then um, they're assuming uh, the liability workman's compensation things like that if if one of our <coughs> officers will get hurt at the event um, there is an uh, insurance policy but I'll let uh, our city attorney answer that question yeah it's, it's all questions. kind of spelled out in the agreement yeah it's 9.4 and it does not we are responsible for our own and they're responsible for for their personnel, and we are, we are we each party waives the right to sue any other party for any workers' compensation benefits paid to its own employees or volunteers or their or their dependents. And that's, Mr. Mayor and Council Member, that's the way the league likes our kind of uh, joint powers cooperative agreements to be set up because they're ensuring and 
kind of defending all our workers' comp claims for all the different cities. I, I don't want to continue on the workers' comp. I have a different type of question. But. So um, curious, um, I'm assuming they're going to have something similar to this with the state patrol? And if they are, um, I'd like to see what that language says based on what the state of Minnesota does when they um, look at work comp from one agency to another. Um, you know, this isn't a reason to say no to it, but it's, it's unusual for them not to, for them to put in there that we can't sue. Um, I can understand covering our own work comp, but we should be able to at least go after a recovery of our costs um, if something catastrophic were to happen. And, you know, and, you know, we're all covered by the league, supposedly, but ultimately we should be able to get our costs back. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, I mean, obviously you don't have to enter into this agreement. The, the terms are kind of the general format that the league has come up for all the cities, but uh, we can always go back and try to get some different terms. Some, I think you were just asking for yeah, what the state asking, patrol is question, yeah. So my question was around um, also liability terms, um, and one of the questions was what was the position of the league, and also you as our city attorney had you reviewed, and you've already answered those questions. Um, I was a little surprised. So there's an event policy that is has a $3 million cap on it. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And it just struck me as given the size of the event and what we've seen recently that that's a rather low cap. So then you, I asked myself, well, what happens if an event happens and you blow through that? Do we have our existing policies in effect covered by the league or are we doing anything that's going to jeopardize what might take the place after you've bl potentially blown through a $3 million cap? Um, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, the $3 million cap, I mean, that's one insurance policy would probably be the first insurance policy they go after. If somehow they can claim that they could go after our insurance, the city is generally liable by state statute and in our uh, packet, I think we, we did not waive our tort liability limits, but we can only be found liable up to $1.5 million and I think it's maybe up to two if it it's hazardous property, but otherwise, <clears throat> if the city was found liable for $10 million, we could we can only pay out $1.5 million, and then we buy insurance up to that amount. And that's my question. We're not doing anything in this agreement that jeopardizes that second place insurance up to our statutory obligation. No, okay. that's always there. Okay. I mean, that's why. Mr. Mayor and Council, you always ask me if I'm worried about liability. I mean, we, by state law, we cannot be held liable above 1.5 million, and then we always have insurance up until that level. Correct. Okay. So, do we want to uh, just take a list until next meeting? Do we get some more answers? Well, go ahead, Ed. Is this for the entire week of the Super Bowl, or is it just Super yes. Bowl? Yes. I'm, you know, I'm perfectly fine moving forward with it. Um, I would like to see what they signed with the state patrol because I, I'm almost positive it'll be different. Um, but uh, I don't like the fact that we're waiving the right to sue. But I don't, like I said earlier, I don't think it's a reason to to back out. I trust that uh, the event's going to go off without a problem, and uh, I trust the officers that are going down there are going to do a fantastic job. So. I'm perfectly fine moving forward. I'm not going to get in the way. I had a couple of just more minor questions beyond the off, off the liability topic if we're open to moving beyond yeah. the liability questions. So th this would work as, a, as in kind of an off-duty type assignment where is it on a volunteer basis? And I guess the core of my question is current staffing isn't necessarily excessive and hopefully we're in a different position by the time we're at the Super Bowl. But, you know, is this something that would be officers off duty in off time on a volunteer basis. There's nothing in the agreement where we're committing a certain number. Just wanted to know administratively how that would work. Yeah, they would be off duty. Um, uh, we definitely would not short our road at all. Um, if that was even an issue, um, even if you agreed um, with this cooperative agreement, um, I still have the authority 
um, at the time. And I think it's so many days in advance that I can say, yeah, you know, we're, we, we cannot assist because of uh, our, our own concerns here at, uh, in our own jurisdiction, so. Unrelated critical incident happens here and we're able to just pull off. Yeah, yep. I will have to look at the, the terms there. I thought it was like 45 days, um, if I remember correctly looking at it. Um, but I'm just saying leading up to it, even if it's approved today, yep. 40 day, 45 days in advance, um, we could definitely pull this. Okay. But it would be officers that are um, uh, off duty and um, in volunteer, and I, actually I have no idea at this point how many are gonna be interested. There might be two, there might be um, you know, 15. What I do know is that more than likely, it's not like they're probably gonna be sitting in the Super Bowl in US Bank Stadium watching it. Something tells me they're gonna be you know, doing some more uh, security and such um, in a little bit of cold weather, so. <laughs> so uh, just one more follow up. Um, it's, you're not taking anybody off of their patrols. And, you know, all our officers are at full time right now. So this would incur overtime then? Would they re reimburse us for overtime? Almost? Yes, or they would reimburse us for um, overtime if it was um, overtime that they'd be technically working. So if an officer had put in 40 hours and they um, maybe were scheduled to work on a Saturday and that was their scheduled day off, we would, the city would get reimbursed for that overtime that they would uh, incur. Okay, all right, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, I'll look for a motion, 7A. Cooperative agreement. I'll make a motion that we approve the cooperative agreement. I'll second it. All right, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Dan. Uh, Mayor, members of council, I have before, uh, before you is the recommendation for the hiring of the streets maintenance position. A uh, little bit of background, this is, uh, position was, became available due to the restructuring in the Public Works Department, which transitioned the engineering technician to a streets maintenance position um, for the pond cleaning um, that the city is going to start taking care of. Um, we underwent a recruitment for the new street, street maintenance opening, and after reviewing over 30 applications, we tested the top right candidates and performed in-person interviews. We decided to pursue the hiring of Dennis Zeal for the position, and this was based on his performance in both the interview and testing process, the positive uh, background checks um, that were done. Um, this offer is still contingent upon Actually, I take that back, this is previous. He has passed the, all the testing in there. I'm just waiting for the paperwork on that. A um, Little bit of background on Denny. He spent the past two summers working as a seasonal employee for the Public Works Department. He's also helped out in the wintertime with um, plowing. Um, prior to working for the city of Forest Lake, he served on the Forest Lake Fire Department and has operated his own business. So therefore, we're recommending the hire, approving the hire of Denny Zeal in the streets maintenance position at the established grade for the position, which is grade five. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Mike. Dan, I'm hearing that um, this person does not have a, a commercial driver's license. Is that correct? It was, as far as I know, he went and took the test and it has it as far as I know. It would all be verified, though, prior to his first damage. The position description is within... Within 30 days. Within so he 30. technically has within 30 days to get it from data fire in the position description. And he did go through in the interim and has taken the test. He did go through what, I'm sorry? He went through and applied for it and has taken the test on it. I'm just wait, I haven't checked in to make sure everything is on it. Like I said, I'm just waiting for the paperwork to come in. Is this, um, so this is already in the budget right now, or is this a new position? Is, I mean, next year's budget, or it's in the budget now? Yeah, it's in the budget. This is the replacement for um, this uh, stormwater, the, the money that was in the stormwater, 70% stormwater, 30% general fund, if I remember correctly. Water okay. and sewer. Water and sewer, that's right. So now it's, is it gonna still be the, same breakdown or are we going general fund out of this or well, public works I mean 
Can that's a discussion for next year's budget, but for this year's budget, it was uh, budgeted in the surface water management fund, predominantly. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion that we uh, approve the streets maintenance hiring recommendation from Dan Unum. All right. I'll and second. Motion and a second. Any further? Oh, go ahead, Mike. Mr. Mayor, I've never ever voted against a hire. Um, and this will be actually the first time because um, I can't believe that we're hiring somebody who's just getting their commercial driver's license. And I'm sure there was other people who had uh, commercial driver's license that are probably as well, if not more, more qualified um, than this individual. So I've never, ever voted against a hire. And uh, this, is, this will be the first time because I do feel that there's other people who are more qualified. Yeah, I've, I've had the same hesitations myself. I, uh, so our I don't know the testing procedures, but, you know, testing can take you only so far. But I, I think there's... You know, I, 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 there's got to be a pool of candidates that, you know, maybe we start over on looking. So help me to understand. Um, is there I would there's is there a reason why I, um, in the job description it doesn't require two years of experience of commercial driving or help me to understand more of the role and what how a commercial driver's license um, impacts that role. Mayor's council. Valid, uh, valid point. I'm just I'm not sure how it applies to the position, because it's not in the current job description, it sounds like. So what we do from a, a process perspective is, you know, we have traditional, you know, application submittal. Um, we also, and, and, you know, quite frankly, in, in tougher economic times, we, you know, we've had over 100 applications for this kind of position. I think we had <laughs> around 30 in this case, and so the construction world is doing quite well, and and uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of people are you know, able to, to work, especially in the heavy construction industry right now, it's uh, work is plentiful. Um, we uh, went through the process. Dan does a really nice job. We, we sent him through it's called Wonderlick testing where they do a cognitive ability as well as a personality characteristics inventory for kind of a personality test, if you will. Uh, you know, in this case, uh, Dennis has the benefit of working for us seasonally, and so they've had the opportunity to you know, not only test him for capability in the field, um, but also um, capability um, <coughs> in terms of how he fits into the culture. Uh, there's a situation uh, here where, you know, we had a, after that testing, uh, brought a series of people in. Uh, and it was a significant number. Was it 10, 12? I mean, it wasn't it was quite a, few. a decent number of people. And uh, after uh, bringing those folks in, it, the interview panel was myself, Dan, Dave, and two members of the public works staff. And, uh, you know, the consensus, you know, was, was to recommend Dennis. Uh, Dave, maybe you can, did, has Dennis uh, finaled out on his uh, Class B at this point, or do you know where that's at, or? He's passed his permitting, air brakes, all that he's assessing. Okay. Okay, and so that, that's progressing. Uh, we, we do, you know, we did post it uh, as well as a previous posting we had uh, Class B within, you know, a certain amount of days. Uh, we have the six-month probationary period, and I think in public works it might be actually longer. Probationary periods kind of float around, but, you know, in the event, of course, he was not able to successfully get his Class B, you know, we have the option, you know, of, of not doing that. In fact, our previous hire in this position also did not have their Class B at the time of hire. It was, you know, a probationary discussion point, you know, that we have with, with folks. And so uh, we, we did have some good candidates, um, but I just, you know, ultimately all those factors I mentioned kind of led us to, led us to Dennis. Right. Any other discussion on this one? I just want to clarify one point as far as the budget is concerned. This position opened up because someone else was moved to a different position. Members Council, uh, last year's budget conversation, we uh, discussed in the Surface Water Management Fund uh, during the budget process, Mark Peterson, who had been a, a senior engineering technician, uh, resigned. And uh, we then evaluated what we were going to do to fill that position. And the thought process at that time was that we felt like it would be better to contract some of those technical services that we had been getting out of the position 
uh, with MS4 permitting and compliance and grading permitting and things like that. And so we established some funding within the Service Water Management Fund for that, uh, for contract services, but thought it would be better um, to bring a public works position on that could focus on stormwater management, um, more aggressive, street sweeping, more aggressive, um, pumping of sumps, uh, pond maintenance that we can do in-house. Some of it you have to contract, but any of those surface water management activities, and we just kind of feel like we're gonna get a better return on water quality with that, with a maintenance oriented approach versus uh, you know, some of the other things that we were working on. And so it was budgeted um, and we just have taken some time uh, with, uh, you know, with, with getting to the recruitment phase of things. Um, I also would say the ancillary benefit to this uh, maintenance focused position is that all of our team members in public works do snowplow and as we add road mileage and you know other maintenance obligations, pedestrian bridges, trails, you name it, more ponds, more you know catch basins, whatever lift stations. As we add that, I mean, this was just an, an opportunity to meet some of that unmet need as some of these developments come online and you know uh, give us the opportunity to enhance our snow removal uh, response. So. <coughs> So Dave, um, four months from now when we're plowing snow, um, are you confident that a brand new person will be able to, a brand new commercial driver will be able to uh, handle what you need them to handle? Aaron Council, uh, National signage or something that this is going to be we are, in a forest area? Yep, we're going to use MnDOT with our early warners. On, uh, up by Manning at 97 and North Shore between there and also right in front of the high school. When we do these details, when we throw four squads out there, they're going to see the early warners and then they're going to see a bunch of marked vehicles. Um, Ryan, maybe you could answer, but would there be any benefit to just a yellow flashing light at North Shore for temporary? Uh, how about I just go through my whole recap of 97? Because <laughs> it all builds up to what Captain Weiss has said here too. So last Monday night, we had an open house that uh, MnDOT put on. I was very well attended. I was started at 5 p.m. and went up and even into a little bit overlap in the city council workshop. Uh, people showed up 15 minutes early and were there all the way till 6.30. And obviously MnDOT got a lot of feedback back. Uh, speed was talked, uh, site distance was talked about, we gotta do something now was talked about. Uh, and then, you know, Tuesday morning, there were some people that weren't able to attend the Monday night meeting that contacted myself or other city staff on these MnDOT's contacts. And I know MnDOT got an earful Tuesday too, right? To the event and the accidents that occurred Tuesday afternoon. And I also got confirmation back from some of those residents who called me making sure I was aware of it and I was tracking and gathering information already Tuesday, Tuesday nights and we submitted Wednesday morning to MnDOT to making sure they were aware of the incident, <clears throat> not just one but two, uh, and basically demanded we want something done now and you need to review this intersection and I can't remember if I sent a picture of a flashing light or if I just verbally stated it but you know on some blind intersections you mostly see them in uh, areas up north or out east where you're coming around a corner, you know, vehicle stopped ahead. You know something like that that's tied to a loop detector it's easily to be installed so i threw out some out the box things for them to look at but obviously what we got going on there is not working today so something needs to be done before winter and we'll be on mndot until that gets done and in the event that all happened you know we had some traffic going on with school with how things have changed this year and then also the 97 so we all recapped with staff police staff city staff myself last week the has some action items coming out of here to try to improve safety <clears throat> overall in the 97 corridor. So with that, we got some meetings also coming up here in the future. Um, probably gonna have to have another conversation again with MnDOT before our September 13th meeting where we were talking about some items that were related to the comp plan, but also some short-term items with the Goodview intersection. Probably that's going to be elaborated into the 97 corridor too. Also at your September 18th workshop, I'll break it down into more detail, kind of what projects that we're talking about that will be coming with MnDOT co-op agreement projects, um, specifically the Harrow Avenue 97 project. 
how that affects uh, driveways each way of that. So a lot of things are going on. Today was supposed to be a lane shift for the project that was supposed to start today at uh, 97 and 11th Street Southeast at BP gas station. I drove through, emailed, called, and tried to find out why that didn't happen. I did see some construction vehicles and two MnDOT inspectors sitting on 11th, so something was going on, something delayed something today. I don't know what that was or why, but that project's in the works. Again, going to be constructing a left designated turn lane that has 0% cost participation from the city. So that's kind of the balance game we play too. You know, you can push MnDOT so far and you try to utilize all their funds and not use city funds uh, on some intersections. But, you know, we took the lead on 97 Goodview 8th study. MnDOT's been scoping North Shore Trail to construct a left turn lane there. Uh, they did get some feedback there too that one thing I never thought about from one resident that was there. Well, why are you doing the left turn lane? Why don't you just make the shoulders wide enough so bikes can get through there? You know, because when you have that right turn lane and you, you kind of go over the top of each other, they were open to that idea, <coughs> great idea, you know, of uh, making things better too with just the, the meeting. So there's obviously a lot of political pressure on 97 again, and I know the mayor and administrator met with some high representatives today. Um, or maybe last week, yeah, yeah. but you know we just gotta keep pushing. You know because there's a lot of other places in the state that are fighting for the same dollars we are. We're just trying to build our story and uh, gather information that makes us competitive for those highway safety funds. Uh, maybe some future legislation bill is directed this way too. But uh, we're in the middle of a Highway 97 access management study with MnDOT too that they're funding. And we're trying to supply them so much information and show them that growth is coming. And by the time you think you're going to build this, it's already we're going to overlap you with this growth in here and keeping them up to date. What's going on, you know, with subdivision submittals coming in, stuff like that. So it's a lot of conversation going on, and you know, we're trying to push the urgency with them. And I, I know they sense it, but it's it's got to come at all levels: council, residents, staff, you know, to build the bigger picture. So. And I think that's where we're going, and some things are going to be going into motion here, starting with what Captain Weiss just commented on. Thank you. And uh, just to follow up, um, uh, everybody that was involved in the crash, I know none of the kids were hurt, but how was everybody else? Yeah, everybody was, amb one was amb ambulanced away, she was amb but the rest were, uh, no injuries on the kids, and she, she was going to be fine. That's good to hear. <clears throat> Thank you, Captain Weiss. Yep. All right. Jolene, anything? Um, I already touched on my update a little bit, but I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any further for me. All right. Thank you. Aaron? Uh, just a couple of items. Uh, I, I don't know if the council got this email because um, it was kind of a blind copy thing, but uh, Senator Housley is hosting a tour of the Capitol. And uh, so I'm seeing maybe that people did get that. Okay. And so we don't need to do a collective registration. You can kind of reply on your own. But that is uh, Thursday, September 21st at 11, an uh, hour tour and then a half hour of discussing legislative initiatives, which is something, you know, we've got plenty of those um, out there at this point. Uh, we are uh, working on uh, the police officer recruitment. We had people through last week and uh, did a number of interviews, I think about 12. and. Uh, did uh, work on extending offers to two candidates that are going through backgrounding now, and so that will be taking place. But in, subsequent to that, uh, the council will receive a recommendation for hire there, uh, probably later, maybe the second meeting in September, depending on how timing goes. And uh, I'll defer to the mayor on our meeting with Representative Detmer this morning. Uh, do note that uh, that. You've probably been seeing a number of emails uh, pertaining to Fenway Fields and some of the maintenance concerns there. Uh, the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission is going to meet on Wednesday uh, to further discuss those. And uh, I know we've actually had a number of, you know, just informal meetings uh, trying to get that on the right track, uh, kind of with the Baseball Association, uh, FLA, and, and city staff. And so we, uh, uh, and Parks, Trails, two Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission members. Um, that are also the Fenway Advisory Rep, so we'll continue to kind of try to work through that and see where the uh, Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission meeting goes Wednesday evening. Uh, I'd also note that uh, I had the opportunity to attend the Minnesota Real Estate Journal um, East Metro Development Summit uh, last Tuesday. 
and uh, sit on one of the panels there that was sort of promotional for Forest Lake and economic development and went well and uh, give thanks to Washington County uh, for their work and kind of sponsoring and promoting that. And then uh, I think somewhere down the chain there, there's the uh, Twin Cities Business Journal. Yeah, and um, that uh, ad and profile on Washington County um, had uh, come out this week. And so it's really uh, well done and uh, it's kind of fun to look at. And we have a half page ad, half page ad uh, within that. And the only other thing I would note is uh, after the council updates, we have a closed session to discuss labor negotiations. All right, thank you, Aaron. Cheers. <coughs> Any updates? No updates. All right, thank you. Oh, Ryan. Any other updates for me? No other updates unless you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, Sam. Uh, <clears throat> since the last regular meeting we had, uh, I've been to two school board meetings, and of course the big news there has already been in the paper and so forth about the uh, possibility of a referendum for this fall. And uh, <clears throat> this, I think, believe it's $9 million they're asking for, and and uh, about $750 per student. The rest of it has just been uh, normal business and that sort of thing. The Watershed District, uh, I made one of their meetings, and uh, the, the thing that, uh, well, they did dis discuss the, the aquatic invasion species update, you know, the, what they're doing on Bone Lake and, and, and uh, uh, Forest Lake and so forth, and been treating uh, for weeds and so forth, and they also, uh, Discuss the new street sweeping uh, situation that uh, that uh, we should sound sound to me like we're going to get some funding to uh, help with that. We're trying. Yeah. yeah, we're trying. So, anyways, th those are two updates that I have for you. All right. Thank you. No, no update. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, Aaron mentioned that uh, we did. Uh, Aaron, myself, and uh, Representative Detmer had a meeting this morning. Um, Hopefully we started something productive. We went over uh, some issues, some concerns we have, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, in, our, in one of our next uh, workshops, we'll kind of develop a uh, list of items that we want to address, not just with him, but possibly with uh, Representative uh, Emmer and our senators as well. So we got to break that down. Um, talk to all of them about it. But uh, one of the big things was the uh, intersection of 97 and 61 where MnDOT um, basically has a dirt pile at uh, the prime corner in Forest Lake and looking to uh, get that turned back over to us and possibly do a land swap uh, somewhere else so that they can move their dirt pile over by our compost site, something where um, it works better than, you know, the first thing you see coming into Forest Lake is that. Um, it's a great potential for redevelopment site along with um, the area just uh, to the north of that. Um, obviously, there's some challenges with access, but that can be overcome. But between the visibility and uh, uh, commercial potential, I think um, we really need to push MnDOT and um, push our legislators to you know, get a bill, get something through to get that turned back over to us. Uh, we talked to him about a couple other issues, but I think I'd like to uh, you know, discuss that with the council at a workshop and, you know, get a list of um, legislative, legislative initiatives to bring forward. Um, but yeah, he was, he was uh, very cooperative and, you know, very open to um, the concerns we had and, and bringing a lot of that forward, uh, working with uh, different agencies in the state to, uh, you know, kind of be our, our voice to them and hopefully some of our concerns get heard a little bit more than they have been right now. Uh, beyond that, uh, we got the Senior Center uh, Volunteer Luncheon coming up this week. I'll be attending that and giving them an update on some of the things that are happening around Forest Lake as well. I've uh, been busy meeting with um, a few different businesses, um, a couple that potentially are looking to come into Forest Lake, um, a couple that have some concerns over um, different ordinances, um, possibly looking at, again, uh, sign ordinance and, and maybe needing some reviews as uh, terms go on that. Um, I think there's a couple of fees and other things when we go through our fee schedule that it's time to uh, make them go away or modify them to 
get them better in tune with what the reality is out there. So um, pass it along to you, Mike. Okay. Um, I'm hoping at some point in time that we're going to have um, more discussion on uh, the airport issue with the funding from um, reimbursement, I should say, from uh, MnDOT. I'm hoping that's going to be in a closed session. Um, there's an issue um, with the 190th project that uh, the Planning Commission um, met last Wednesday, um, and that project uh, evidently uh, got tabled. Um, I seem to remember that group being willing to pay for water being put in, but at the Planning Commission, the city presented um, uh, an issue where residents along that stretch were all going to be assessed for the water. So I think more discussion needs to happen. I'm glad it got tabled so we can kind of get that uh, back on track. Um, the uh, corn feed is tomorrow night um, at Lakeside Memorial Park. And then Aaron mentioned the issue at Fenway. And then the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission meets uh, tomorrow. Is that tomorrow or Wednesday? I'm sorry, Wednesday. So I'm going to start with the tough one. Um, Council Member Freer, you and I have had a conversation on this question. And um, as you know, the topic of your residency has been a hot topic. Um, I'd like to ask you to um, work with our city attorney. I know you have some concerns over the information that's being requested, but to develop a plan that would be a workable solution. Um, I think we owe the public something more than what has been provided today. I don't have a specific ask for what that is, but I think the two of you could work out something, um, find some common ground and figure out how do we make this issue go away. It seems silly, it seems like an easy enough question to, um, it's not silly, it's an important question, but it seems like it's an easy enough question to resolve. And let's just resolve it, take it off the table. Next topics. Um, I uh, attended, going way back, we've, it's been a while since we've met, um, end of July, attended the Bluegrass Fest. Gary Lee um, had a table for the Planning Commission um, to talk about the comp plan, spent a little time with him, um, encouraging, is the survey for the comp plan still open? If it is, if you haven't yet filled out the survey for the comp plan, a link is on the city website. Good opportunity to have your voice heard on that process. Um, attended the pickleball grand opening. Um, also went to the MnDOT open house last week and got a lot of heard a lot of feedback. Um, I'd like to thank city staff, um, police department, communications, um, um, city engineer on all of that's been done in response. I think um, people are certainly dialed into this uh, this topic, um, and uh, it's great to see a quick response. So I appreciate everyone's efforts there. Um, quick update on the YMCA. I think maybe Aaron had sent a notice around to council, but in case anyone hasn't heard, um, Sharna, um, the executive director, has been promoted to be the executive director, um, actually the chief operating officer of YMCA Green Bay. Um, she is, uh, her last day is Friday, um, September 8th. If you had an opportunity or the pleasure of working with her, she, she has been a great asset to our community, has been a driving force in the success of the YMCA, and they're getting up to speed. Um, so if you have an opportunity before she le leaves to uh, wish her well and give her thanks, please do so. That's all I have. Right. Right. Before we close, can I um, say something not to what you're thinking? Sure. Um, the, um, my family had a personal tragedy um, with uh, deaths up in Duluth. And uh, there are several of you um, who re actually reached out to me to, to express your concern. It's my wife's, it was in my wife's side of the family. Um, we knew the people very well. and. Uh, for all of you who did that, I appreciate it. And and uh, Ryan and Lily um, passed away, I believe it was December 10th or 11th, or excuse me, um, August 10th or 11th. But uh, the reason uh, um, council meeting was canceled on the 14th is because um, the mayor was gonna be out of town and I was gonna be at uh, Lily's wake. So um, I just wanted to address that. And since you brought it up, we hadn't met in a while, I wanted to say uh, thank you to the city for agreeing to cancel kind of last minute when we found out the funeral plan. So um, not an easy thing and uh, literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, literally, so. Mike, can you help us out with the residency thing? No. Jay, what are the requirements? The, there was a request for through the Freedom of Information and 
he, I believe he was the only one that didn't answer to it. I want to know why. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, um, I did give a memo to the City Administrator shortly before this meeting. Um, it's a privilege, but essentially uh, it's my opinion that if the City knows Mr. Freer's address, they, that is public information. Mm -hmm. So that's the conclusion I came to. Largely because um, you guys are not considered employees. Right. Of the city. So his address should be public information, is that what you're saying? If the city knows it, yes. And what happens if they don't know it? I mean, the taxpayers of this city have every right to know whether or not their councilman is a resident of this city. I don't know that I or the council has the legal authority to make uh, Mr. Freer provide that information. I haven't provided that information either. There is a legal path and then there is just, let's just do the right thing, which is why I encouraged a conversation between city attorney and council member Freer to come up, devise a plan that is comfortable so we can make this go away. This should not require a legal path to resolution. It doesn't require a legal path and I have no problem talking to them. He just asked if I was going to uh, take care of it for him, which isn't gonna happen. Um, I have no problem talking to the city attorney because there's no legal issue here. There is no issue. My address is in Forest Lake, period. Prove it. The citizens of this city deserve more. Than you, correct. <laughs> All right, there's no other business. I'll move for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to move to closed session pursuant to Minnesota State Statute 13D.03 for labor negotiations. We have a second on that? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 This ain't over, boys.